Hello, I'm Joe O'Brien, you're watching ABC News 24. Just breaking into that program there because the Greens leader, Christine Milne, has just begun a media conference in Canberra. ...and celebrate the areas we've protected over a long period of time, particularly our national parks and world heritage areas. Whenever you talk to people about what's special about their state or their district, inevitably they talk about the Great Barrier Reef or they take, talk about the Franklin River. They talk about the Coorong. They talk about the places that are special to them and they are our national parks. But what we've seen in recent times is a major attack on national parks. The state governments have essentially ignored generations of people who've worked so hard to protect these beautiful places as habitat for our plants and animals and places where people go to relax and enjoy themselves. And now you've got shooting in national parks in New South Wales. You've got a state government pushing for grazing in national parks in several different uh, places. You've got an attack on the World Heritage Area with approval to dump 22 million cubic metres of dredge spoil into the Great Barrier Reef. And Australians rightly are saying that Tony Abbott is a, would be a bad Prime Minister for the environment because he would condone this massive attack on national parks around the country. Tony Abbott, destruction of national parks. That is really what is coming to Australia and we must keep the Greens in the Senate to stand strongly for the protection of our national parks. And so what we're announcing today is that we cannot leave our national parks just up to the whims of Campbell Newman or Barry O'Farrell. What we need to do is make sure that the Commonwealth, as well as the states, have responsibility for looking after these precious places for all Australians. And so we're saying into Commonwealth legislation, we need to put national parks wherever they are in the country. We live in a huge country. If you have a look at the map, you'll see a very small percentage of our huge country is protected as national park but they go to who we are as Australians and our national identity and our love for our plants and animals uh, around the country. So we're saying let's put into Commonwealth legislation protection of national parks so that if a state government moves to destroy national parks, to undermine their conservation values, as a whole these national parks can be considered by the Commonwealth and would, uh, would trigger environmental assessment by the Commonwealth. It is a risk to all Australians that Tony Abbott doesn't care about our national parks, but it would be shocking to have him handing over all those powers to the states. We need to keep those powers and put new powers in at the Commonwealth level so that we can stand up and protect those places. Larissa. Thanks, Christine. Uh, look, national parks are too precious to lose. And yet they're under attack like never before. We've got state governments with mostly Liberal premiers allowing things like shooting, grazing and now logging in national parks. It's simply ridiculous. We've got less than 4% of the country, as you can see from the maps behind us, that are in national parks. They should be permanently protected. They shouldn't be open for logging, grazing, shooting. What's next? Are they going to let mining happen in national parks? Uh, this is exactly why we need the federal government to step up and say national parks need national protection. That's what the Greens will be moving for in the Senate. And unfortunately, we know Tony Abbott doesn't want the federal government to have a role in protecting the environment. He wants to leave it completely up to the states. So we will see more destruction of our national parks if we have an Abbott prime ministership. This is exactly why we need uh, amendments to our federal laws to give our national parks national protection. Um, they're great icons. They go to our identity as Australians. They bring in an awful lot of uh, tourism visitors and dollars, and they're simply too precious to lose. These biodiversity icons uh, make us who we are, and they need national protection. What guarantee is there that the government wouldn't do the same as Tony Abbott if re-elected? Well, the... Uh, 
what we're seeking to amend with our national laws is to give the federal environment minister the ability to protect national parks, the ability to say activities which would significantly impact on national parks, for example, logging, grazing, shooting in certain circumstances, would be able to be precluded by the federal environment minister. You're right in saying it would take um, a federal environment minister who's prepared to stand up for the environment to use these new powers. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that uh, in recent times, but we need to get the system right so that environment ministers can be empowered to make the right call and so that members of the public can then say, hey, we really do want our environment minister to protect our national parks and then to be able to put that pressure on the minister of the day to do the right thing and to act in the interests of the environment and protect national parks. People are feeling really disempowered. People are thinking, what can they do in New South Wales and Queensland as they see national parks opened up to logging, shooting and the like? And they're thinking, what can we do? Even if we run a big campaign in Queensland, Campbell Newman's going to take no, no notice. Whereas if they know that the Commonwealth has the power and that you've got Greens standing up strongly in the Senate pushing the Commonwealth to use those powers, then you'll see people empowered again. We've seen what people power can do and we know that people love their national parks. So this is really about saying to Australians, it's time we gave the Commonwealth the power and the people the power on the streets to force the Commonwealth to act. Yesterday we saw come into power uh, our marine national park network. Congratulations to all those campaigners around the country who've worked for so long to have an extensive network of marine national parks. But again, you've got Tony Abbott and the Nationals saying that they would undermine those national parks. But give us the federal powers and the Greens will stand strongly in the Senate with the community to say, let's look after our national parks. After all, they're the last vestiges in many cases of precious plants and animals and ecosystems. If we lose those national parks, those things are going to be gone forever. And there is such a thing as being too late. We've got about a um, uh, hundred or more bills to get through in two sitting weeks. We are going to be campaign, campaigning strongly on this. The likelihood of us getting a private member's bill up in the uh, short term uh, is uh, difficult, but if we could get the cooperation of the government, we would move on this immediately. It is essential that we get protection of our national parks and that Commonwealth power. We've been saying for a long time we wanted the Commonwealth power to look after water in Australia. Initially, the Commonwealth rejected that and said that was a silly idea, but now they want to do it themselves. Equally, Julia Gillard came out and said she would jump through the hoops that the Business Council of Australia wanted and hand over powers to the states. Fortunately, the campaign nationally has showed the Prime Minister that was a very bad idea and we now have to do everything in our power to stop the Commonwealth handing back environmental responsibilities to the states and instead strengthen the national legislation so that we can act in the national interest. It is in the national interest to protect our plants and animal species and the places we love and that's what the Greens are here to do. How does this plan differ from what happened in Victoria a few years ago when Tony Burke did step in and, and, and stopped alpine grazing? Well, look, what Tony Burke was able to do a few years ago with the alpine grazing issue was to then list um, that beautiful national park as a national heritage area. Uh, that's one way of acting. It takes a long time. It's not a quick process. Um, there is an emergency listing process, but even that is quite extensive. Um, rather than these place-by-place -place interventions when there's a bit of political pressure, what we need are all of our national parks nationally protected. Uh, this framework would allow the Federal Environment Minister to protect all national parks, not just those national parks when he wants to pick a fight with state premiers. I think the public uh, expects better protection for our national parks. They know how valuable they are. Uh, we know that more than half of Australians actually visit national parks every year. So clearly Australians love these areas we use them, um, they're economically important, of course they're very important wildlife sanctuaries. So we need proper protection for them and it shouldn't just be a matter of uh, political pressure to act to protect one national park under threat. We need systemic protection for national parks across the board. Would your plan ban all shooting in national parks? 
Well, look, the, um, the plan would use the framework of our current laws, which is to say that activities which will have a significant impact on national parks would need to be ticked off by the, by the federal government and therefore could be refused by the federal government. Uh, so rather than banning specific activities, because it's hard to foresee what activities will be proposed next by state governments, who would have thought logging would be proposed, and yet it has been. So rather than listing specific things, we think a stronger approach is to say any activity that's going to significantly impact on national parks should be able to be uh, refused by the federal environment minister. So that gives the strongest level of protection to national parks from anything that the state premiers will throw at these beautiful areas. Proponents of, um, of alpine grazing have, have raised that um, the Greens have said nothing about the feral uh, pests, in particular brumbies, goats, deers. Um, I think a lot of that shooting introduction in New South Wales is sort of towards brumby culling and whatnot. Um, it, do we need stronger strength to, to eradicate the feral pests in our parks? Look, I think absolutely people acknowledge that our national parks need to be properly managed and that's certainly an issue that we'll be looking at uh, funding mechanisms to make sure that the federal government can help the states in that respect. Uh, we need to protect these areas but we also need to properly manage them so that um, both weeds and feral animals aren't then degrading those very values which we hold so dear. So certainly the management of national parks is a key issue. What we're announcing today on World Environment Day is, first of all, let's not let those actual threats to national parks that state governments are permitting, like the logging, like grazing, like shooting, let's not let those activities undermine um, the, the, the preciousness and the integrity of national parks. So we'll certainly be having a look at how to encourage the state governments to better manage national parks, but first of all, let's just stop them letting the loggers, grazers and shooters go in. Forestry land, basically. Uh, are the Greens effectively moving to list old forestry land as of the same ecological significance as, say, Uluru or the Reef? Uh, well, Uluru and the Reef are, of course, world heritage areas, not national parks only. I mean, they're national parks as well, but they're also world heritage. So, yes, Dan, there is a distinction there. Uh, but importantly, those new national parks that have been added in Queensland um, were deemed to have national park value. You can't just say something's a national park. It's got to meet the criteria. It's got to have those speci uh, special nature values, those biodiversity values. We want those values protected. Um, those national parks have been added to the national park estate, and they deserve to be protected. They've just had this protection given and now it's being ripped away. Uh, it doesn't make any sense and this is exactly why we need the federal government as a backstop against reckless state governments, mostly of the conservative persuasion, who are simply trashing the very little amount of land that's meant to be off limits for logging, mining, grazing, shooting. If we can't even protect the 4% of Australia that is national parks, then something's going terribly wrong. And if we have an Abbott Prime Ministership, we know that he will put absolutely no hold on those sorts of damaging activities. He'll roll out the red carpet for state premiers to do exactly what they want in national parks, no matter how damaging. That's what we're trying to stop here, and that's why it's crucial that we have the Greens in the Senate to stand up for national parks and protect those places that are simply too precious to lose. Would the proposed dumping on the reef contravene any World Heritage regulations? Well, this is the thing. We have World Heritage areas that are meant to be protected. Unfortunately, sometimes those protections aren't strong enough. And there's an awful lot of discretion that's given to the Federal Environment Minister when making these sorts of decisions. We've had the World Heritage Committee express concern about all of these new coal and gas ports going into our reef, treating the reef uh, simply like a toilet bowl in allowing 22 million cubic metres of dredge spoil to be dumped on it. We have the scientists saying actually that stuff moves even further than we thought and it could be smothering even more corals and even more seagrass beds uh, and even more fishing grounds than we previously thought. So we absolutely need to say, look, let's stop dumping a whole lot of dirt on the Great Barrier Reef for heaven's sake. It is a world heritage area. It's not a rubbish tip. And simply because it's cheaper for the big mining companies to put their dredge spoil in the reef is not a good reason to treat the reef like a rubbish tip. That dredge spoil needs to be disposed of on land and those ports, frankly, should not proceed. And there's a very big risk uh, at the World Heritage Meeting that's coming up in June in Cambodia that the World Heritage Committee uh, will consider putting uh, the Great Barrier Reef on the World Heritage in Danger list. Mm. That would be a shocking indictment uh, of the Australian government and Australia. In the global community, we would be seen to be trashing an area that the world determined 
is of outstanding universal value to the whole world, to humanity. And so everyone's going to be looking at Australia and saying, what is going on that Australians have decided to abandon the Great Barrier Reef and prefer instead massive expansion of coal and coal mining, coal ports, not only being a pusher of greenhouse gas emissions globally through the burning of that coal, but destroying something that the whole world knows. When you leave Australia and you say to people, uh, have you ever been to Australia? They say, oh yes, and you say, and where did you go? And it's always, oh well, we went to see the Great Barrier Reef. It is one of the things that define our nation. And what does it say about us as a nation? If we say we want the world to love our Barrier Reef, but actually we don't love it ourselves, we don't care if millions of cubic metres of dredge spoil are dumped onto it, we don't care if our national parks are logged, we don't care if the animals in those parks are shot at, we don't care what's happening to grazing in alpine areas. That doesn't say much about Australians and I think it sells us short because when you sit down and talk to people about what they value about the area they live in, they always come back to the natural environment. They, they love the scenario they live in, they look out the window and they enjoy the scenery, or if they live in the cities, they can't wait to get out into the mountains or onto the beaches and actually enjoy themselves in the natural environment. Mm -hmm. So the environment is a heartland for Australians, and we're saying, let's protect it, let's protect our national parks, and let's not allow an Abbott government or these destructive state governments from destroying our national parks. Um, being that we're likely heading towards a Abbott government, have the Greens had any discussions with Tony Abbott or Greg Hunt or anyone from the coalition about this national parks policy? Uh, no, we, I haven't spoken to them. No, no, but we know full well that the uh, clear policy of the Abbott opposition is to allow state governments to have complete control of areas of the environment that currently our federal government has responsibilities to protect. So we know that they want to weaken existing protection, so we can assume they certainly don't want to add new protections for national parks. Uh, Tony Abbott will simply let the logging, let the grazing, let the mining, let the shooting go ahead in national parks, and that would be an absolute travesty, and I don't think any Australian wants to see that happen. And the community will have a chance to see exactly where Tony Abbott stands when the legislation on the water trigger and the powers going back to state governments comes through this parliament before the election. An Abbott government would be a disaster for the natural environment in Australia and that's why the Greens in balance of power in the Senate standing up strongly for the environment will be so important in the face of people who simply don't care about it. Thank you. Thanks, Okay, that was the Greens leader, Christine Milne and Larissa Waters. That was live from Parliament House in Canberra. They're keen to